crap. Yeah, no, you killed it, bro. <laughs> All right, so. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on Proven Power Cycles. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Eric. Uh, there's yeah. Lewis. There he is. Yeah. Look at him over there working. Today, we finally got um, a bike that we've been wanting to do for a while now. Uh, we have a 2022 BMW S1000 Double R in, and we are very, very excited. Um, Admittedly, we only had one other chance to tune one and it had a built motor from a certain company and Turns out there was some improper building done on it and Come to find out every single one of the exhaust valves was hitting against the pistons and that was in all four cylinders um, Anyway, we ended up only doing a hand like probably about two or three pulls before we shut it down and borescoped it and checked it out because I wanted to make sure it didn't look right. We were able to save the motor from completely blowing up, so um, very glad that, that we were able to catch it, but uh, for the owner mainly, uh, and for our sake too, but mainly for the owner's sake, he spent a lot of money having that thing built. So anyway, this is our second one that we finally have the opportunity to tune. We've spoken to a lot of people, but their setups weren't exactly ideal so uh, we're glad that we were able to finally get one on the dyno here and uh, start utilizing the Woolwich Racing software so we can tune this thing so now Bryn they own this market I will give it to them as far as the BMW S1000s go uh, Bryn is definitely the most common name and my hats off to them they sell a good product and uh, honestly it's it, they do they sell a really good product these flashes that they're selling for these bikes are good so we'll see how the custom tune with the Woolwich goes. I haven't done it yet. Again, we haven't had a, a successful one, so we're going to uh, we're going to do it on this one. Now, the modifications that this bike has, we're going to go over it real quickly. He does have a chain and sprocket. It's a super light rear with a let's see the EK. All right, so a 525 EK ZVX3 chain, which is a very common chain. It's like a really good bang for your buck chain. Uh, super light rear sprockets. I'm not sure what he has on the front, but it's going to be a steel front anyway. I am 99% sure he told me he was on stock gear ratio. He's got the Brock lowering link. He's got the BT Moto stacks, I believe, and a Sprint PO8 and a flapper delete. And he also has a full aero exhaust. Now, this particular one I have not seen yet either on uh, the BMW platform, the s 1000 R platform. And again, guys, this is me personally. I have not seen it. I'm not saying they're not out there. All I'm saying is I haven't seen an aero exhaust system on uh, these bikes yet. So uh, I've seen plenty of Acras, uh, and that's about it. I, actually, <laughs> I've seen a ton of Acras, but I have not seen the aero exhaust for these yet. So uh, very excited to see what this thing's gonna do. Uh, we're getting ready to baseline it now. We just started uh, trying to idle it up, get it warmed up. These things have a very, very loud and uh, pretty obnoxious idle, to be honest with you, for the cold start. And uh, here, we'll start it now for you guys. We got the 2022 BMW S1000 RR. We got the baseline numbers in, and admittedly, it's a little lower than what I was honestly expecting. Uh, we ran the bike about five times. We had a little bit of wheel spin. The straps, they kind of moved a little bit during the pulls. So we retightened the straps, and 
these were the two uh, best runs that we got. So here are the baseline numbers. Admittedly, these are a lot lower than what I was expecting. Uh, we, we did have an, uh, one other one that we had a good baseline number on, and that was a 2023 BMW S1000 RR. That one made a little bit more, made like 185 on the baseline, but he also did not have the velocity stacks. Um, and he also did not have an arrow. He had a full Brox exhaust on his. But let's look right here. Now, we don't have a good RPM pickup through and through. So we're gonna go off a mile an hour. Eh, let's see here. We'll add it real quick for you guys. Now, all right, I wanna point this out really quickly. So you see this little blip here on the red graph, and then you see the blue and the red, how we have these little blips here. So notice here too, this is the RPM. So th this is a three wire coil. Uh, we get a little bit of interference with these, so um, it's a little tricky to read it. So right now we're reading the dyno graph and speed, and then here's RPM. But we get a little snag here, so um, we kind of have to more or less guess through this. But as you can tell at this lower RPM, so around 7,000 RPM or so, um, here we'll take where it starts, which is going to be roughly here. Here. So around 5,500 all the way up to about 8,700 RPM. This huge lean spot here in the uh, in the curve. Now look here on the graph. Look how dead it is. Ugh. This thing is struggling through that RPM range, and then it picks up. And honestly even on the dyno, I can feel how shitty this is. So you have a loss in torque through. Yeah, what is this, about 6K or so. We're losing torque all the way from, actually shit, it happens all the way back here. Yeah, so any again, anywhere from around 55, 5,800 RPM all the way through this 8,700 or so, uh, we're losing torque more or less. So that whole section of that power curve feels like absolute crap. So that's a big, big, big range to feel crappy. So this is gonna be a very big thing that I'm gonna focus on right here. Now these are done in fourth gear. All of these pulls were done in fourth. So this is gonna be a large section and I know that second and first gear, they're even worse. Uh, they have more of a pullback, I should say. So uh, it's a very common thing in the BMW world. Everybody knows about it. So these are gonna be the things that we're gonna be definitely fixing. Uh, along with this upper end power range too. So it kind of has, this is the uh, stacks, if you will. This is the area of which they're right here and right here are the two areas that we're gonna be basically focusing on to really pull these up to kind of help make this more linear power curve up there. So uh, we're gonna be looking to do some massive changes on this bike. Uh, I can't wait to get started. You know, AFR, again, we kind of go rich here and then it stays pretty good up here. So AFR is not horrible and this is pretty bad, And uh, but the rest of it's not horrible. It's really that lower end RPM range, going low going into mid, horrible, horrible. Here is gonna be a different thing we're gonna be playing with. Um, I don't know, I'll have to look at the mapping and see what we can come up with, so. All right guys, so we just put the first map in. Uh, now this is 100% base map. I have no idea what it's gonna do. Um, but, but, uh, I wanted to show you something, uh, on the warm up. So we warmed the bike up about, I don't know, 30 minutes ago or so. We've been letting it sit on the fan since then. And, uh, what I'm going to do real quick for you guys is, uh, I cooled the bike all the way back down. We're going to start it up and we'll take you through this warm up procedure versus how the OEM BMW, uh, one is. So. Uh, real quick now it is gonna start high but give it like a few seconds and you'll see it'll start to pull down Versus how the OEM uh, the OEM setup does so here we go. Let me fire it up for you guys better versus how it used to be.
All right, guys, we got the BMW S1000RR all wrapped up, and holy crap, I am beside myself. I, uh, it was better than I expected, honestly. Now, and I'm sure you guys have heard this many times. Everyone always claims it, I feel like, but truthfully, my dyno, it does read a little on the lower side, comparative to what I've seen on other dynos. Now, always compare the baseline to the final and always kind of look at the baseline numbers to give you an idea as to how that dyno is reading. So uh, some baselines are higher than others. Um, you know, it also varies on the bike, but for the most part, they should stay within like a few horsepower of a range. Uh, with that in mind, just keep that in your head as I show you this. Um, oh yeah, and the other thing, now I forgot to show the before, admittedly, but we also, every time a bike comes in, we always clean the chain and sprockets and the wheel and do any adjustments if necessary. Uh, but we did just get done cleaning all this. This thing was filthy. I forgot to do the uh, before on this. But that also always comes with the ECU flash and dyno tune. But for what you guys really want to see and what I really want to show you is the numbers. So just to recap, here is our baseline, 176 wheel at 76 foot-pounds of torque. Now, you'll see these dropouts. Remember, these are the uh, ignition signal losses that we're getting from the inductive pickup. So those little blips are ignition losses along the torque curve. But look, we had an okay AFR. It goes insanely lean. Then it comes back to where it kind of needs to be. It's a little fat, a little rich, and then it goes, it goes really rich with the uh, stacks. It gets very rich, and then it goes back basically where it needs to be. All right. So that's the baseline, all right? Which admittedly, this thing did baseline a little lower than our 2023, but um, that's okay. Here is the final. Massive gains. So we'll look at the final now. 201 on pump gas. 201 on pump gas. That is incredible. 86 foot-pounds of torque too, which is that, that number is monstrous. Most 1000s nowadays are only putting out about 81 to 8, man, 84 is a high torque number uh, comparative to 201. And again, guys, this is on freaking pump gas, 93 pump gas here in the States. So here is that dead spot. Now the gear I chose was fourth gear. Here was that dead spot that we saw earlier, the 84 horsepower, now you're at 104. So you have a 20 wheel horsepower gain at okay we didn't get the uh rpm so those rpm glitches kind of mess with the uh dyno curve so i have to measure it in speed so you guys can actually read it but uh this power loss or this major power gain that we picked up here is going to be roughly 6600 rpm uh anywhere from around 66 to about 6800 rpm uh where this 20 wheel horsepower it, that's a major jump. So right in that mid-range going up as you're climbing. I mean, and this is this is a solid here. We picked up another 20 wheel here. So this is a pretty consistent horsepower gain for a chunk of RPM. Uh, this RPM, we're at 8,000 RPM. So again, we were over here, we were at 60, 6,500 roughly. So we're at 6,500 all the way up to, let's see, and this is about where it starts to teeter up, 6,500 to 8,000 RPM. So a good 1,500 RPM. That's a huge range to pick up that much power. So this is at 11,000 RPM. And again, we're at 23 wheel horsepower gains. So it's pretty consistent with the power gains here. All the way up here, we're at 24 wheel, almost damn near 25 wheel horsepower gain. And that's at 13,000 RPM. So massive, massive, massive gains. I am beyond happy with these numbers. Uh, this is awesome. This is, this is more than what I was hoping for, to be honest with you guys. I think the Bren Stage 2 stuff is hitting around 197, if I'm not mistaken, 198. We had one on here that did 198 with the Bren Stage 2. Um, and we have another one I wanted to compare and overlay to, but uh, all in all, guys, I mean, very, very good. I mean, now again, this is also a custom map versus a mail-in flash that Bren offers. So keep that in your mind. You know, if they had your bike on a dyno, you'd probably be seeing similar results. They could probably squeeze that last extra couple of horsepower out of it. Um, you know, I just have the luxury because it's on the dyno, so I'm able to push it a little harder. I can monitor it and watch everything. So all in all, very stoked, amazing power. This is incredible. If you got a BMW and you're local to us, you know, reach out to us. Um, 
this was a lot of fun to tune. It was challenging, it was very challenging, but it was a lot of fun to tune. I really enjoyed tuning this bike, so um, again, couldn't be happier, so. Dude. So how different is it? Like day and night. Bro. <laughs> so like, first gear is like more manageable. Okay. And like second gear is just like, all right. I just mean, fucking yeah, dope. Yeah. So how was the drivability though? Dude, it's a lot smoother. Like well, a lot smoother. It's not like the stock map is so like rowdy. It just wants to come out from underneath you. And then fucking get. Yeah. Okay. That's what I felt on the dyno. Yeah. Like, all right. It feels like my CBR, like how smooth it is. Yeah. The, right, 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 yeah. right. Okay, so with that being said, did you tell him or no? You haven't, you haven't really talked? Okay, with that being said, you baselined a little low and I was a little worried at first. Yeah. It baselined at 176 wheel. That was yeah, it. Yeah. The other one that we did, the newer one baselined at like 183, 185. Yeah. But that was also a newer model. We ended at 201 on pump. No way. With 86 foot pounds of torque. And to put that into retrospect, a brand stage two, same year. Yeah. I want to say with more mods, because that's Mike's bike. Yeah, Mike's bike. With more mods, Mike laid out 197. Damn. On my dyno. Oh, what? To put you into perspective. Unfortunately, we couldn't really get into too much around here for traffic. But when you get back home, we'll put it up. Oh, yeah. Dude, when I opened this so, up, when we were coming on the highway, dude, it just hits from 50. Like, God. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, no, you killed it, bro. Killed All it. right, dope. Now, in the smooth on throttle, that was a challenge. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was a little bit of a tricky part because there's 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 multiple maps on on these, and they're they're a little weird as far as the labeling goes. So it was a little odd for. I was like, ah, oh, let me test this. Let me try it out. And I got out of that. I'm like, all right, let me test this. Try it out. But you know, to me, it's I'm a perfectionist. There was definitely some things in there. I feel like I can make it better, but right. I feel like over time. I can get to that. But like I said, I wanted to see what you thought oh, before I said anything. 10 out of 10. Dope. Day and night difference. So the biggest change that I noticed was like first gear at like 50, it just like tracks. Right. Like I didn't even strap down or anything. Like no wheelie, nothing. It and just, it just, yeah. No then way. You go to second and it's just like, all right, we're in. I was like, all right, cool. Damn, that, and it was, all, that's all guesswork. Yeah. That was all guesswork. Dude, you couldn't have set it up more perfect. Like, Thank you guys for the love. Thank you for the support. We uh, really appreciate your support. If you could give us a like and a follow and uh, leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think of this video. Tell us what you think of these numbers. Um, you know, tell us what you want to see in the future. So, uh, and again, if you got a BMW, hit us up, man. This was a ton of fun to tune. I, I really enjoyed this. So um, anyway, guys, be safe out there. We love you guys. See you on another episode.